And then there's some electrical safety and EMC considerations. Uh, here are a couple standards that are referenced uh, in uh, FDA's uh, ASCA pilot uh, guidance. Uh, and I, I joined a couple of them. They, have, they actually have three bullets, but two of those bullets are the exact same standard as far as I'm concerned. I mean, maybe minor differences there, but um, different recognition number depending on what you're using. Um, and, and then for EMC information, there's a treasure trove of information around EMC. I'm, I'm not gonna go into it. It's just, it's, it's not specific, I would say, to home use uh, products, but, uh, and, and there are lots of people who can help you in this area, but this resource in particular, this link that I've provided, it's, it's sort of your gateway into all of that information if you need to go down that, uh, down that path and figure out some information you know, around EMC. And I'll, I'll, I'll uh, bring up an example here in just a second of some of the potential uh, uh, deficiencies that you might see in this kind of an area if it's applicable to you. Um, and then here's, uh, here's an example um, of, of a home use RF uh, EMC deficiency. I think, uh, Allison, I, I shared this with you um, a, a, a while back. Um, I, I'm not going to read it, uh, but you have the text. And if you're doing anything in the, in the, in the EM space, EMC space, uh, just be aware that FDA is going to be looking for you to do testing consistent with this AIM standard uh, 7351731. And uh, I, I'm not able to find it anywhere else, but this has come up in, on multiple occasions where FDA wants you to do testing to, to this specific standard. So just, just be aware that there are these kinds of considerations. And uh, I, I think it's important to highlight maybe at the, you know, at the top some of this information uh, that um, don't, don't try to justify out of doing the testing. Others have gone before you and tried. Uh, so FDA is not, FDA is not hearing you. Um, so uh, I, I would say save yourself the time and the headaches. And if you are, are um, trying to get a device into the home and there are EMC considerations, just figure out a way to, to work this testing in. It's going to save you a lot of headaches. Um, and then here's an example essential performance uh, deficiency. Um, it's, it's interesting um, that, that, that FDA is calling out essential performance um, for, uh, you know, in, in a number of, of, of areas. And I don't think part, part of the challenge is essential performance gets defined differently for some of these tests than it does, you know, potentially for how I would think about essential performance for um, uh, or how I would think about that, you know, that terminology, um, you know, in other contexts. So just, just be aware there's maybe some nuance here. You should think about that and, and wherever you call out essential performance, maybe give that a little bit more scrutiny. Just be aware if you call out essential performance somewhere, or even if you don't, FDA might be chasing, uh, chasing that as something that, um, uh, that you need to pay some more attention to. Thank you.